Thank you so much. It is great, great honor for me to have an opportunity to give a keynote. In this talk, we would like to talk post quantum loop key exchange with logarithmic order. So this is the outline of my talk. Usually, group key exchange protocols are executed, are extended from two-party key exchange protocol. So in the beginning, we would like to introduce a famous C. Henneman key exchange protocol. That is the first construction of GKE was proposed by Bamester and Desmet. They proposed two ways. One is called BD1 and the other is called BD2. To use. Okay. The other is BD2. So, before going into detail, we would like to show how to extend the Hilman key exchange to BD1 and BD2. And then we move to an elliptic curve version. And that is also the same as ECDH, called ECDH, and we can construct group key exchange based on an ECDH. And in the case of LT count, there are another, another feature that is so-called bilinear pairing. By using bilinear pairing, we can also use the key, ex key exchange protocol that is also extended in a group key exchange. After we show this protocol, we would like to go in, on, going to a post quantum secure GKE. Important point is difference between BD1 and BD2 and why it is not easy to make post-quantum secure GKE from key exchange protocol, then we would like to see how we construct GKE based on SIDH. Okay, and we conclude, we would, and finally we conclude my talk. Okay. So what is GKE? GKE is a group key exchange. A group of in parties share a common secret key over in a, over an insecure channel. And GKE is used in many applications like ad hoc network, social network, etc. So how we construct such a group key exchange? Originally, we start two-party key exchange. One of the typical ways is Diffie-Hellman key exchange. In order to extend two-party key exchange, important part is how we arrange in the party. The first way is circle version that is so-called BD1. And we also have another party arrangement that is called BD2. So in this talk, we start from a method to make GKE from two party key exchange and then we have how to apply the method to just quantum key exchange. Okay. So why do we know loop key exchange? It's by Mr. Desmet for in parties that is usually represented BD1 and BD2. In the case of BD1, as for the N parties, all the N complexity, and that also has a contributory. On the other hand, BD2 has all the log N complexity, and it satisfies scalability. So, what is scalability? In the case of SBD2, it can work in both low and large resource parties. That is different from BD1 because BD1 is contributory. Okay, so how we extend two parties to n parties? Important part is arrangement. In the case of BD1, n party is arranged into circle as a result of the n complexity. On the other hand, in the case of BD2, Parties are arranged into tree base. As a result, it can achieve logarithmic orders. In the case of LT curve, not only ECDH, but also we can also use bilinear pairing. By using bilinear pairing, we can achieve not two party key exchange, but three party exchange. In the case of three party exchange, we can also apply BD1 approach and the BD2 approach. In the case of BD1 approach, the party in party is 
arranged into a circle like this. In the case of VT2, the party and party is arranged into tree. As a result, even if we use binary pairing based key three party key exchange, VT1 BP satisfies order and complexity, and VT2 BP satisfies logarithmic logarithmic orders. So when we make the GKE group key exchange, how we evaluate? So now we said n is the number of parties, and we define round complexity that is times any party must wait for information from other parties before the next step. The next computational complexity that is computational time that one party must execute. And communication complexity is broadcast like this or multicast message received by any parties. When we say group key exchange with logarithmic complexity, that means we assume constant round and computational and communicational complexity is logarithmic for n. Okay, so we start from single to party Diffie-Helma key exchange. In this protocol, we want to share a secret key between parties P0 and P1. Important part is no trusted third party, and that is done in an open network. So here we use FP is a finite field, and P is a prime. G is an element in finite field FP. The order is Q. And first round, a list computed by A is equal to G to GA. That is sent to B, Bob. And Bob also computed by B in the same way as Alice. And finally, they can construct the shared key by using Y B to G A, that is equal to G to G A P. And in the case of Bob, Bob also computes Y A to G B, that is the same as K. So GKE is extend this two party key exchange to n party key exchange. Okay, so before showing how to make now the Barmester Desmet BD1 and BD2, we'd like to show security assumption related to a Diffie-Hellman mm -hmm. key exchange. That is so-called computational Diffie-Hellman problem. Let a uh, final field FP and G is in FP, so given G, G2, GA, and G2, GB, CDH is to compute Y equal to G2, GAB. And decisional DH problem is let FP a finite field and G is an element of FP. And for given G, G2, GA, G2, GB, and Y, decisional DH problem is to decide whether Y is equal to GAB or not. So when we extend two party exchange to group key exchange protocol, we would like to keep the security assumption. That is a point because that is not easy in the case of post quantum secure key exchange protocol. Okay, so this is the overview of group key exchange. So Two party, there are many two party key exchange, that is Diffie Hellman and LD Cup Diffie Hellman key exchange. Both have two kinds of group key exchange based on the BD1, based on the BD2, that is called BD1 ECDH and BD2 ECDH. In the case of LD Cup, we also have binary pairing three party key exchange, that is also can be extended to the group key exchange. BD1, BD1 to binary pairing. And in the case of BD2 binary pairing, actually party arrangement can be defined two ways. One is edge based, the other is node based. And such approach we would like to extend to the post quantum secure key encryption scheme. In the case of isogeny, SIDH, we have in a party SIDH, but this is not the same approach by using BD1. And another group key exchange 
is the same approach BD2, but a little bit different way if necessary. In the case of link LWE, <coughs> in this case, we have a same BD1 base and the BD2 base. In this talk, we would like to focus on the isogeny based key encryption scheme to extend group key exchange protocol. So now we move to group key exchange. So this is a security model of group key exchange. Here we assume a passive adversary A. Passive adversary A is given the following oracles, execute, review, corrupt oracle, and test oracle is asked once during A's execution. And finally, A outputs a guess bit B prime. Then A wins the game if B equals to B prime. B say pi is a secure GKE. If for any PPT passive adversary A, the advantage is negligible. We can also use CAT and Young compiler, transform GKE secure against passive adversary into that is secure against active adversary. So in this talk, we focus on the passive case. So now, let me show by Mr. Desmet BD1 party arrangement. So we assume that there are any parties P0 to Pn1, Pn minus 1, and the parties are arranged into this circle like this. And FP a finite field as usual, and G is an element from FP star. And first round, PI computes GI is equal to G to GRI. That is the same as the P Helman key exchange, and send this GI to PI minus one and PI plus one. This is the first round. And second round. After they get, after PI gets the data from PI minus one and PI plus one, they compute XI minus one, XI plus one, like this. GI plus one over GI minus one to two GRI. That is equal to G two GRI, RI plus one minus RI, RI minus one. And broadcast it to all. So these elements we call auxiliary elements. So all P out party uh, after party gets these auxiliary element, they can compute group key. So PI computes the group key by executing this equation. And finally, PI gets G two G R zero times R one plus R1 times R2, plus Rn minus one times R0. Okay. So party is arranged in circle. So the computation amount is depends on the party N. And another point is, if we compare the original two party keys, and if we compare group key, the final group key is not equal to the two party key. Okay. So, how is the security? In the case of Bamesta Desmond BB1, the security is given like this. So, assuming that decisional Diffie Hellman problem over FP is heard, then BD1 defined over FP is a secure group key, ex key exchange protocol. So next is the future. As we have seen the previous slide, BD1 requires order and complexity because parties are in a circle, but it satisfies contributory. So in every round, transmitting party leaves traces on every parameter. And furthermore, BD1 satisfies equivalent complexity. That means any party works in the same complexity. 
And another important feature is the final group key is not the same as two-party key construction. This is one of the different from BD2, as we will see later. Okay, so now we move to the Vamesta Desmet 2 BD2. This is the party arrangement. In the case of BD2, N parties are arranged into the tree like this, and in the same way, FP is a finite field and G is an element of FP star. In the first round, PI computes GI equal to G to GRI. It is the same as BD1, and it is the same as Diffie Hellman key exchange, and send GI to neighbors. In the case of BD2 arrangement, PI's neighbors is defined like this, and PI is this node, and if we write parent i is a parent of pi, and pi has left child and right child. These three points are called pi's neighbors. So after gi, after pi computes gi, gi is sent to the parent i and left child and right child. So now we are going to the second round. This second round party compute auxiliary element to generate a group key. So PI computes XL, X left child I by using this equation and X right left right child I by using this equation. And after make XL child I and XR child I, this left child element is sent to the left descendant. And in the case of right child element, that is sent to the right descendant. And after PI gets all such auxiliary element, PI can compute a shared key by using this equation. Compared with BD1, in the case of BD2, party is arranged tree. As a result, complexity is logarithmic. And another difference is final group key itself is the same as original Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So in the case of BD2, group key is equal to two-party key. As HONA security, it is the same as BD2, BD1, and BD2. So that is assuming decisional DH problem over FP is hard. BD2 is defined over FP is a secure group GKE protocol. On the other hand, such a future falls in the case of BD2. First, this is BD2 satisfied. Order log n complexity, and it also has scalability. Here we say scalability, parties in lift can work less complexity. Thus, we can arrange parties into large and low complexity parties. And final group key is the same as two-party key construction. And furthermore, in the case of BD2, we can use flexible party arrangement. So in the previous C, previous slide, we only saw a binary tree, but not only binary tree, but also any party tree can be used in the case of BD2. So now we move to the LT curve version. So LT curve is a non-degenerate cubic curve defined by this equation. And the important part is addition is defined as a result E is a group. It is the same as multiplicative group of finite field. And addition is computed easily like this equation. So only a few multiplication is executed in addition and doubling. 
and then if the rational point of LD cup is represented by EFP is a set of like this, but this becomes a finite Abelian group, like a multiplicative group of finite fields as a result by using if the rational points of LD cup, we can define Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So this is a two-party key exchange based on LD cup ECDH. So E is LD cup and G is a point in LD cup point. And first round, we compute by A equal to A to GB and send it to B. And both also compute by B and send it to A. And the final key, group key, is computed like this. K is equal to A times B times G. Compared with finite field case, we just change multiplication into addition. So this ECDH is also extended to the group key exchange by using BD1 and BD2. In the case of BD1, BD, so it is the same. So we only show a BD2 of ECDH. So party is in parties, and party is arranged in the same way. And PI neighbors is defined like this, parent I and left child I and right child I. In the first round, GI is RI times G is computed. And this GI is sent to the PI's neighbors. And after PI gets this auxiliary element, PI computes and match cast the next computation to left and right descendant. And the final group key is computed like this, K equal to RI, G parent I plus XG from, the, from all ascendance point, ancestors point. The important part is the final group key is the same as the original ECDH key. And security is the same, it's the same as BD2 of DH, so assuming the decisional ECDH problem is heard. BD2 of ECDH is a secure, secure group GKE protocol. Here, decisional ECDH problem is defined in the same way as decisional DH problem. Okay, so before showing post-quantum GKE, we would like to move to another key pairing, another key, ex key exchange that is that use bilinear pairing. In the case of LD curve, we can define bilinear pairing. E is a bilinear pairing that is a pairing map from G1 times G2 to G2 to GT. Pairing satisfies two features. First one is bilinear. So EAG, BG prime is equal to EBG and AG prime. And it also non degenerate So by using bilinear pairing, we can use both arithmetic LT curve addition and finite field multiplication. And then, Decisional bilinear diffuse Hellman problem is defined in the same way as ECDH and diffuse Hellman case. So DBDH problem is given Y1 and Y2, Y3, and G. Y1 and Y2, Y3 is like this. And determine the tuple is chosen from bilinear pairing point or random point. And then three party key exchange based on a binary pairing is defined like this. So E is a FD curve and G is a point. We said E is a pairing. So this is a three party key exchange. And so they make a triangle. And first round, Alice computed by A equal to A times G. 
and send via 2GO. B, Bob and Carol do the same. And final group key is computed like this. Alice gets YB and YC by using YB and YC. E, YB, YC, 2GA is equal to E, G, A, 2B. E, G, pairing of G, 2GA, ABC. So this three-party key exchange can be extended to n-party key exchange by applying BD1 and BD2. In this talk, we only focus on the BD2. Okay, so E is a curve and G is a point and E is appearing. In the case of BD2, party is arranged into the tree. In the same way as BD2 of Diffie Hellman and BD2 of ECTH. But here, three party exchange is applied. As a result, party trees consist of triangle. And we also need to define neighbors. So now PI is here. Then PI's six neighbors is defined like this. So one is parent, parent I, and the other is sibling I. And PI also has a left child and left child two. The PI also has a right child, one first right child and second right child. So these six becomes neighbors of PI. So in the case of BD2, based on the bilinear pairing, first and second round is defined like this. So first round, PI computes GI equal to RIG and send PI's neighbors. Like this figure, so after PI computes GI, GI is sent to the sibling, parent, left child, and left child, first right child, and second right child. And in the second round, PI computes X left child element by using pairing. And PI also computes for a point to R, the right child of I, like this. And then this value is sent to the left and right descendant. And finally, a group key is computed by this equation. Important part is PI computes a shared key. The key itself is the same as original three-party key exchange. Okay. So in the case of binary pairing, Actually, two types of party arrangement can be executed. First one is node-based that has been shown in the previous slide. Another one is edge-based. So in the case of edge-based, connect triangles at edge, edges. In the case of node-based, connect triangle by using edge. Party arrangement is different in the case of node-based and edge-based, but shared group key itself is the same as original three-party key, that is this blue part. But important part is if we change party arrangement, then computational complexity is, becomes different. For example, it is an example of seven-party arrangement one is eight node based, the other is edge based. P1 is inner node. In the case of inner node, P1 computes and sends this X4 to each point P4. But in the case of edge based, P1 computes X4 just one pairing. As a result, if we change party arrangement, the computational complexity can be reduced. And of course, we can combine node-based and edge-based 
can we make a binary pairing based key change? Okay, and how is the security of binary based CKE? Even if we use H based binary pairing based CKE, or even if we use node based binary pairing based CKE, the security is the same. Assuming the decisional binary diffusion problem over G is hard, binary pairing based CKE is a secure group CKE protocol. Okay, so now we move to the post quantum GKE. And what is the difference between BD1 and BD2? So when we make group key exchange by using BD1 on the ECDH, we need to compute this equation. As we noted the previous slide, that is not equal to original ECDH key as 0i1 times g. And furthermore, this computation means all these elements should be in g. So when compute k, arithmetic is done over a group g. On the other hand, in the case of BD2, based on the LT curve diffusion monkey exchange, k is computed by using this equation, but the final key itself is equal to the same original key. So finally, it doesn't require any arithmetic over group in the case of BD2. So now we think about super singular isogeny diffie hellman key exchange protocol. Final key is a J invariant itself. This is an element of final field group, but J invariant itself cannot be treated as a group. That is, a set of J invariant is a set, not any arithmetic over J invariant. So this is why when we make a GKE, we need to another approach. So first approach, we choose different approach from BD1 that is proposed in 2019. And another approach is focus on the BD2 because final key itself is the same original key as a result even if this computation requires arithmetic of group and even if J variant is a just a set and not a group, but final key is the same as original key. As a result, we can apply BD2 approach to SIDH. Okay, so first we would like to see first approach that is different approach from BD1. Okay, so before showing GKE by using SIDH, let me explain SIDH itself. So first, we would like to explain some LT curve related known facts, especially isogeny. So E is given like this, and P is a prime. But here, we use extension field. Q is equal to P2G2. And the J invariant is, in a sense, ID of LT curve is defined is like this. If P is greater than 5, greater than or equal to 5. And important future, that is very important to make key by using isogeny. If two LT curves are isomorphic to each other, then J invariant becomes equal to each other. SIDH use these features. And what is isogeny? Isogeny is just a rational, homo rational homomorphism from LT curve to the other LT curves. And another important feature of LT curve is Phi is any subgroup for given LT curve, then there exists an isogeny phi, 
and also exist another empty cup E1 such that isogeny phi is a map from E0 to G E1. And the kernel of phi is equal to the subgroup phi. This future is used to make a key by using isogeny. So super singular distributional diffusion problem, SSDDH, is defined like this. So P is a prime, but a little bit complex, a little bit, you know, not straightforward. And in the case of SSDDH, we choose two primes, L0, L1, like this. And E is a super singular empty curve. And E, L0 is a group of L0 torsion. And that is generated by two points, P0 and Q0. And phi i is isogeny from E to G in i. And importantly, one of the very good features of isogeny, E i is isomorphic to E over this subgroup. The subgroup is generated by an element Pi plus Ri Qi. And given tuple E0, E1, Phi0, P1, and Phi0, Q1, and like this, determine either E prime is isomorphic to this or that one. This is SSDDH. Okay, so now we would like to show super singular isogeny Diffie-Hellman key exchange, SIDH. So the setup is the same. So E is a super singular empty curve. And first round, P1 computes R0 equal to P0 plus R0 times Q0 for R0. So this small R0 becomes a secret key on P1. And phi 0 is isogeny. So R0 can generate a subgroup of E. Then by using future of isogeny, there exactly exists isogeny from E to the E0. E0 is isomorphic to E over R0. And we also need another point. P1's isogeny is phi 0. By using isogeny of P1, P1 computes this value, phi 0 P1 and phi 0 Q1. That means P1 and Q1 is used for P2. But image of phi 0 is computed by P1. So in the same way, P2 also computes R1 like this. And phi 1 is defined like this. And in the same way as P1, P2 also computes not only isogeny, but also phi 1 P0 and phi 1 Q0. This point P0 and Q0 is used in P1. Then now we get this figure. So from by using E, P1 compute isogeny P0 and make LT curve E0. On the other hand, P1 computes P phi 1 and get an LT curve E1. After they get those points, P0 computes another point, phi 1 P0. Important part is isogeny satisfies homorphism. As a result, phi 1 P0 is equal to phi 1 P0 plus R0 Q0, but this point phi 1 P0 and phi 1 Q0 comes from P1. As a result, P0 can compute like this. And then by using this element, P0 compute another subgroup of E1, this one. So by using the future of isogeny, P0 can compute another isogeny from E1 to E10. That is defined this. In the same way, P1 also computes phi 0 R1 by using this. And by using this element, 
P1 also compute another subgroup included in P E0. By using this subgroup, P1 computes another isogeny, E0 to E01. And finally, P1 and P0 also generate two LD curves, but these are isomorphic each other. As a result, J invariant itself is equal to each other. As a result, P0 and P1 can share a key by using J invariant. The security on SIDH is like this. Assuming that SSDDH problem is quantum hard, then SIDH is a post quantum secure exchange. Okay, so now we move to group key exchange based on SIDH. As we have seen the previous slide, we cannot apply BD1 way easily to make the group key exchange based on SIDH. So we use a different approach. So P is a prime, but P has, you know, in the case of SIDH, they use two primes, L0 and L1. But in the case of N party, we use N primes. And A is a super singular. That is the same as SIDH. And PI computes RI. That is the same SIDH. So this small RI becomes PI's secret key. And then phi I is isogeny from E to GEI. And PI also needs to compute another point, phi I PJ and phi I QJ. This PJ and QJ is a point of another parties. Okay. And we also use that notation, N is a set of N party. And if we write isogeny phi W, that means E is going to EW. And we also set a value of image of PI is PIW. And image of QI by using phi W is QIW. So in the same way, we use this notation. So E is going to E1 by using phi 1 and going to E12 by using phi 12 like this. And these are also image of points by using this isogeny. Okay, so now group key exchange on SIDH is done like this. So first round, so party is arranged into a circle. As a result, complexity becomes a order log n, um, complexity becomes n complex. And P1 computes this point and send it to P2. And P2 also computes isogeny. And P1 minus 1 is sent this point and LD curves to PI. It is the same as you know, SIDH. And after they get this point, PI computes another isogeny. This computation is done from P2 and PN. And in the second round, each PI computes this isogeny. So phi i plus 1 to phi i and phi i plus 2 to i. And all isogeny, for all isogeny, PI needs to compute element pj and qj like this and send these LT curves and points to next party pi plus one. As a result, P1's group key is an LT curve of E2 G E2 G N and 1 that is isomorphic to this point. And PI's group key, uh, PI's LT curve is also like this. This is isomorphic to now these LT curves. And PN PN minus one's group key is computed by using this LT curve. Importantly, is these LT curves are isomorphic to each other. As a result, J invariant of these LT curves is equal to each other. And finally, anybody can share a group key. So 
how is the security on any party group key exchange? So in this case, assuming the SSDDH problem is heard, the in party group key exchange based on SIDH is a post quantum secure key exchange. That means even if we extend SIDH to group key exchange, the security is the same. And furthermore, the following feature is satisfied. So this group key exchange require order and complexity because parties are in circle and it contributory so in every round transmitting party leaves traces on every parameter how this is why this skin becomes very heavy gke based on sidh okay so now we move to another logarithmic gke based on sidh so in the case of pd2 the final key itself is the same as original key. So even if we compute point auxiliary element, that is not a set of super singular J invariant, finally, the key itself is the same SIDH parameter. So we arrange party in the same way as BD2, like this. So in the case of 14 parties, each party is arranged like this. And in this protocol, each party needs to use different bases. So for example, if P0 use base P0 and Q0, P0 and P2 needs to execute SIDH. So P2 use different bases. So this is a setup. So in this BD2 of SIDH, the same parameter of SIDH is used. So P, Li, Ei, and E, and Pi, Qi is a basis of Eli to Gei. And important part is two parties execute SIDH with different basis of P0, Q0, and P1, Q1. And how PI is neighbored. That is the same as original BD2. So in the first round, if PI use a basis of P0, Q0, in that case, PI compute RI like this. This is the same as SIDH. And then compute isogeny from E to GEI. EI is, is isomorphic to EO over RI. And we need to evaluate phi IP1 and phi IQ1. That is element to another parties. <clears throat> and since this GI, that is elliptical PEI, and evaluated point phi IP1 and phi IQ1 to neighbors. So now we see the PI's neighbors like this. So PI use P0, Q0, and other neighbors use P1, Q1. And this point sent to now PI's neighbors. And the mark that we use this party tree. So here is PI, party I, and left child and right child, and left child of left child like this. And now we are going to second round <clears throat> and to compute the second step of SIDH to parent of I. So first part is this part. So RIPARI, that is an image of RI point by using isogeny phi parent I. So that is phi parent I P0 plus RI is PI's shifted key computes phi parent i of q0. Isogeny itself satisfies homomorphism. As a result, this is equal to phi parent i's isogeny of ri. That is a point of e parent i. OK, so then from the future of isogeny, we have isogeny phi ipi 
that is e b r n i to the e b r n i i. That is isomorphic to e b r n i over r i b r n i. And parent R and PI also compute the second step of SIDH for left child of I and right child of I. So in the case of left child I, first compute this point. So this comes from left child I of P0. And this isogeny satisfies homorphism as a result. By using his circuit key, this value is equal to this one. So that is the image of Ri by using isogeny of phi L child. That is a point of E L child I. And furthermore, by using this subgroup of E L child I, there exists isogeny from L child I to this group, this LD curve. And we also use, uh, PI also makes RI point like this. And to compute and send this value to left and right descendant. And after I get all auxiliary element, PI computes this value. So as we see this uh, J invariant already comes, a set of J invariant does not make a group but final result is the same original key as a result that is also super singular of J invariant. Okay, so that is a comparison, I think. So now we see two types of post-quantum secure group key exchange based on SIDH. But in the case of post-quantum secure group key exchange, J invariant itself does not make a group, so we cannot easily apply BD1 method to SIDH. As a result, first approach is different. But computation round is second. I mean, round is times any party must wait for information from other parties before the next step. That is both are two. And public values computed and broadcast match cast per party is the first scheme requires an order, but next scheme does not require an order. And important part is how many isogeny is required. First scheme is party is arranged into a circle. As a result, an order isogeny computation is required. But in the case of tree-based arrangement, we do not need an order, just logarithmic order. Computational Communication complexity is the same. And the security is also important. Both are based on uh, SSDDH. Those, those are same security assumption. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. So as a conclusion, we explain two-party key exchange, DH, ECDH, and three-party exchange. And we presented how BD1 and the BD2 work well on these key exchange protocol. In the case of super single isogeny, SIDH key is itself a just a set, cannot, cannot make a group. As a result, it is not straightforward to extend two party key exchange to GKE. So that means we may find another new framework to construct GKE based on post quantum secure key exchange. In this talk, we also show two types of GKE based on SIDH. Thank you. This is the end of my talk.